A former Canadian Forces reservist from Winnipeg could face up to 60 years in prison after being indicted by a U.S. grand jury. Patrick Matthews was arrested as part of a sweep against an American neo-Nazi group that was allegedly plotting to incite violence at a gun rally in Virginia. As Eric Sorensen reports, we're learning more about what's behind the chilling accusations. In one sense, these are the moderates, gun rights advocates with their high-powered weapons rallying peacefully in Virginia last month. There is a force that is getting organized for a revolution to emancipate humanity. Despite the rhetoric, little did people here realize the violence that might have happened. According to the FBI, some members of the base, a white supremacist group, spoke of targeting people at this rally. The FBI says the base wants to start a race war in the U.S. that would lead to a white ethno state. This is a group that is a proponent of terror attacks. Ryan Thorpe, an investigative reporter for the Winnipeg Free Press, got to know a Canadian connected to the base, Patrick Matthews. Last August, shortly after Thorpe published a story about him and the base, the RCMP raided Matthews' home and seized weapons. A week later, Matthews was reported missing. Soon, he would be on the radar of the FBI. He walked into a pretty elaborate FBI investigation and actually interacted with an undercover agent. Within two days of being reported missing in Manitoba, the FBI says Matthews crossed the U.S. border illegally and made his way to Michigan. There he met two men who had driven up from Maryland, members of the base, a group already being closely watched by the FBI. The trio then drove back to Maryland and Matthews was taken to Virginia. Two weeks later, one of the men, Mark Lemley, drove Matthews in a pickup truck down to Georgia. There were other members of the base there. Oh, and one other key figure, an FBI agent who had infiltrated the Georgia group. The FBI says Matthews bought ammo, and there was a training camp like this one with guns. In November, Matthews returned north to an apartment in Delaware. In December, the FBI snuck in, installed a camera, and seized images of Matthews testing out a gas mask and other evidence. The FBI says it heard Matthews and Lemley talk about inciting violence at the upcoming gun rally in Richmond, Virginia in January. On January 1st, the FBI observed Matthews and Lemley exiting a store in Delaware where they bought ammunition. They would buy 1,500 rounds a week later. The FBI says the two were imagining violence at the Virginia rally. Quoting Matthews, there is just angry gun owners just streaming in from all over the country. And Lemley later saying, they're like shooting their way out of the city, essentially. Finally, on January the 16th, the FBI moved in and arrested Lemley and Matthews four days before the gun rally in Richmond. The rally went off without incident. Days later, Matthews, now with long hair and others, were indicted on multiple weapons offenses. They took steps to act and act violently on their racist views in order to spark what he called a violent revolution for the white race. Matthew's lawyer called his statements free speech. Mr. Matthew's uh, statements should be considered in the context of him exercising his First Amendment rights. The arrests broke up one plot, but Ryan Thorpe says the base, as a disparate group of cells, remains dangerous. There's indication they had every intention of carrying out uh, violence on people. And I don't think we should be cavalier about the uh, level of violence they could have perpetrated had law enforcement not acted. And remember the trio down in Georgia with an FBI agent on the inside? They were arrested too. And there was one more twist. The FBI says one of them got worried about Matthews, believing he was a threat to their broader operation, and spoke of killing him. In the end, the FBI not only may have prevented violence at the gun rally, they may have saved Patrick Matthews' life. Eric Sorensen, Global News, Toronto.